Hey guys, I got a special video for you today. It's uh, going to be the start of a series of videos I'm going to do that are going to be top 10 lists. And these are going to cover equipment, cells, weapon unique effects, and so forth. Things that are going to be fantastic for new players to kind of get into so that you can see what pieces of gear you should be power surging and using. And it's going to be great for returning players who haven't played for a while because you can see the kind of cell changes that have been made and uh, what is now considered meta. So with that, I'm going to start my first video, the top 10 helms. And we're going to pop right into my inventory here. And I'm just going to kind of show you from here. So number 10 on the list is Light's Crown. And Light's Crown used to be really high on my list, especially for repeaters, because Conduit was a lot better. But uh, because of the Lantern nerf, Conduit is now not considered as good as it used to be because you can't keep it up 100% of the time. So it's kind of fallen down to 10th place, but it still made the cutoff. So let's move on to number nine here. We have the Tragic Echo. Now the Tragic Echo also used to be top tier back when Rage was pretty much just a, a must have for every list. And it's not as good anymore, but it made the list for a couple of reasons. And uh, one, it's still kind of useful, especially for new players, but I want to say the biggest reason is because it's about to get a lot better with the release of the new Omnicell coming out. So I'm kind of preemptively giving it a nine right now uh, because you have to hurt yourself to get a power boost with the new Omnicell. So that's going to pop the rage effect. And it's also, of course, got the unique effect on it, which is an added bonus, and it's got a power slot. So uh, it's probably honestly going to get bumped up in position here uh probably the number like five or six or seven uh after the omni cell comes out but for now i'm going to leave it at a nine uh, next we have the dress scale helm now the dress scale helm is uh one of the few helmets on this list that have a power cell on them and etheric attunement is pretty good but again just like i said with the uh, lights crown it's not as good as it used to be with the whole lantern nerf, so uh, that's why it's only making number eight here. Number seven is Eye of the Swarm. Now this thing used to be absolute trash until a couple weeks ago, uh, but now that Assassin's Frenzy is uh, one of the literally the only way to get a attack speed boost out of a perk. Well, no, no, that's not true. Uh, the most reliable way, I guess I should say. Um, and the mobility, and it's also mobility cell now, so you could go ahead and stick Evasive Fury on that mobility cell. I don't recommend running Assassin's Frenzy Plus 6. It doesn't really do that much. All it gives you is a little extra duration on the timer. So I would stick uh, kind of a, a, um, Evasive Fury in there, if, if anything, or a mobility cell if you're running Wind Fury. But uh, with that, this is actually almost the exact same helmet here. We're going to move to number six, which is the Fiery Helm. Uh, again, it's got a mobility cell, and it's got Evasive Fury built into it, which is uh, also really good. Um, these, these honestly are, both, are pretty interchangeable for uh, sixth and seventh place. But uh, particularly, I think the Fire Defense is a little more uh, beneficial than the Earth Defense. So I stick this ever so slightly above the Eye of the Storm. And uh, obviously you'd want to stick Assassin's Frenzy in that mobility cell slot there. Uh, for number five, we have the Hellplate Cask right there. And Now this used to be a top tier helmet before a lot of the more recent cells have come out this last year. Rage Hunter used to be top tier perk, not so much anymore. But it's uh, still moderately good, and it's got that technique cell in there, so that kind of speaks for itself. This is also a really good helmet to pick up early game, as Hellion is uh, one of the earlier behemoths that you kind of run to that seems like it's like one of the first new behemoths uh, that's kind of big and strong. So lots of people like to farm it, and uh, it's a great, great helmet for new player. Uh, number four, we have uh, the newest, second newest helmet, actually. Uh, is the Thunderdeep Capacitor. Now, this has Sharpened on it and a Technique slot, and Sharpened is really only good for very specific builds, which is why it's not in the top three, but it's uh, 
still a really good helmet to use. Uh, example for axe builds, if you're trying to get some really good one-shot builds going. Uh, or you could use it uh, just for something that you're trying to get uh, some part breaks on a behemoth and you just want to throw this in there because it's got sharpened at a technique cell. Great helmet for that. Moving on to the top three. Uh, this the, the third one isn't super great for every build, but it's super good for a couple builds, including sword. And if that, for veterans, uh, that kind of gives it away. We're talking about the lightning helm because it's got energized on it and a technique cell. Now, just throwing on this helm gives you the ability to get energized six because you can obviously stick the other one in your lantern and you're set to go. Absolutely must take for sword builds. And uh, if you really want to, you could also run it on uh, a war pike build or an axe build, but I personally typically only use this for sword builds but it is still a really good helmet to have again especially if you're a sword main now uh number one and two are both helms that you can use them with every weapon they're the best two helms in the game if you're a new player and you're trying to figure out what you should power surge first these are the two helms to do it with so i'm going to move on to number two the time weave helmet now it's got predator which is absolutely fantastic for veteran players and the only reason this is number two instead of number one is the, the fact that uh, this is only recommended for veteran players as opposed to the number one helmets uh, useful for all players. Uh, and then, of course, it's got the technique slot on it. Absolutely fantastic helmet. Great slot in for pretty much any build that's uh, going to be a high DPS meta build. And number one, as I'm sure a lot of my uh, longtime playing friends have guessed, is the Dark Watch. This helm is used in almost all of my main DPS builds. It's got cunning, it's got a power cell slot, which right now is really heavy meta, especially since Berserker got moved to a power cell slot. Absolutely phenomenal helmet. If you only had to have one helmet for the rest of the game, this is the one that I would pick. So that's, uh, that's the list there. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, remember, uh, again, my contest is still running, so if you throw me a like, subscribe, and a comment, you have a chance to win a title. Uh, I'm going to be giving it away next weekend, so hit me up for that. And uh, if you win, I'll send you a message on YouTube uh, through the, the comment that you posted, essentially. And... Uh, that's pretty much it. So stay tuned for the next, uh, probably going to be five more videos. Uh, obviously, we got three more for the, the other equipment parts. We got the weapon unique effects. I feel like lanterns doesn't really deserve one because there's really not much uh, going on there. It would be a really short video. <laughs> um, and then, of course, perks. That's probably going to be the biggest video is my perk tier list. I might even... Uh, I might even do top five for each category there. So uh, as, as one video, I think that'd be only pretty short if I only did top five for each category, like once every five days. So uh, with that, I am going to peace out and I will catch you guys next time.